I think it's fair to say, Andrew, there have been several books uh, involving walks in the Bath area published before. What makes yours both special and different? Well, there haven't, there hasn't been, um, haven't been any books for quite a few years. Um, what is different from this about this one is that all the walks start in the city centre. They start right here in Kingston Parade in the shadow of the Abbey. Um, and most of them also end here as well. Uh, I think the thing is that they are country walks. You see, that it's a bit of an odd thing starting a country walk in the middle of a city. But with Bath, you can be in the country in most directions pretty quickly. And there is also the option, if you don't want to start in the, in the centre, you can get a bus to the outskirts and start from there. And I, and I explain in the book how that works, you know, where you get the buses from, which buses to get and so on. Uh, I take it that all these walks are different, both in that they are different routes, uh, but they were probably also different lengths, that uh, uh, you go further in some than in others. W would you say there's a, a walk for everyone and for all ages? There are, uh, yes, well most of the walks, uh, what most of the walks have in common is that they, they climb hills because Bath is at the bottom of a valley. Um, there is, a, there is one walk which does not do that and it goes out along the canal and back along the river. But apart from that, you have to climb to get out of Bath and come back down the hill to get back into it. So you, you need a, a certain uh, amount of fitness there. The other thing I think about your walks is there's very much history along the way that you do observe what you're passing. Well, it, it's just... As I did the walks, yeah, I'm just looking at stuff on the, and sort of asking questions. Well, when was that built? What's that for? And, you know, what's that building? What's that man? What's that? So on and so forth. And I, I sort of went looking for the answers and using old pho photographs, old maps and, and so on and so forth. So without meaning to be too cliched, it is a walk through history. I'm, I'm not going to ask you to describe what you see and every single walk in the book, but... Uh, is there one in particular that you like and uh, maybe are there a, a few things along the way that you can tell us about now? Well, th they are all different and I, I haven't really got a favourite. Um, they, they, they've all got their, their points. I mean, the, the longest walk is 17 miles, it goes out to Marshfield. That, that's not the sort of walk you'd want to do in the middle of the winter because you, you wouldn't get it done unless you started out very, very early, early in the morning in daylight. Um, but there are there are walks for this this time of year which are sort of three four miles five five miles long most of them are sort of within the sort of nine ten miles that's that sort of area um but i mean i think one of my favorites is the one that goes out through english coombe goes to, to uh coverhead castle twerton round hill and across um into coal country it visits old um the sites of old collieries at camerton um and dunkerton um, and also the site of the old uh, coal canal, the site of the railway that was built to serve the, the collieries and comes back through uh, passing Midford Castle. So there's, that, there's, a, there's so much variety in that. I mean, there, there, is, there is an enormous amount of variety around Bath. And, uh, you know, you, you go north, you're in the Cotswolds, you go south, well, you go, you, you, you go south, you're on a high ground, and then you drop down into valleys, you go west, you, you, you're on the sort of Wiltshire plateau, if you like sort of outlier of the Cotswolds. So, I mean, it just, it's just so varied. It, it sounds as though you've done your homework. I don't know how much research and how many months went into writing of this book, but pretty well you've done it all for the walker, that they can choose a, a walk in your book and have all the information at hand about what they're going to see, what they're going to experience. Well, a lot of information, including pubs and including, you know, sort of watching out for fields with cows and, and that sort of thing. Um, not months, no years. This, this book has been many years in the making, you know, sort of been slow, slowly evolving. But they're, all the walks I have walked within the last two, three years, well, no, what, 18 months, I would think. So, you know, it's fairly up to date because things obviously change. You know, some, sometimes footpaths are rerouted, it's fairly drastic, but stars are replaced by um, kissing gates and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, I just wanted to make sure everything was up to date and all the pubs were open as well that I mentioned in the book. <laughs> well, it sounds to me if people are making New Year resolutions and one of them is take more exercise, uh, maybe this is a book that would help. 
Oh, absolutely. Yes. I, I mean, this is uh, people in the, in the 18th century came to Bath uh, for pleasure, but also for health. And walking in the countryside around Bath was one of the the main things, you know, that, that people were encouraged to do and did do. How can people uh, get hold of a copy of your book? Well, they can get it direct from us, from Aikman Press, or um, in um, any of the bookshops in Bath, uh, apart from Waterstones at the moment, who are um, dragging their feet on order it, but Toppings, Mr B's, Goodbye Books, Oldfield Park Bookshop, um, and Tipfield Thunderbolt Bookshop in Lark Hall. They all have copies. Well, can I just wish you a, a Merry Christmas and good luck with this, your latest of many publications. Thank you very much, Richard.